Good afternoon, Parkway family and friends. Um, glad to see you here on this Wednesday as we gather together to do our devotional time. Um, I'd like to invite you to um, go ahead and take a moment and sign in in the comments section. Uh, let us know that you're here. Uh, give us a wave. Give us a like. Um, and just uh, let us know that you're joining us, whether it is during the live feed of this uh, premiere or if it is uh, at a later time. Just let us know that you dropped by and we're um, listening and learning and praying with us. Um, for the past few weeks, almost, I guess it's been a couple of months now, um, I've personally been on a mission to try to do something um, proactive for my health. And um, I didn't start this as a New Year's resolution. I did not start this as something to do in Lent. Um, I waited until I guess the timing was right for me and just did it um, for reasons that I, I guess was just ready to do it. Um, so I've been changing my eating patterns a little bit. I have been exercising, walking a lot, and um, beginning to uh, run again after uh, many years of being departed from that sport. Um, and I'm seeing some benefits and some rewards from this activity. It's really great. Um, I'm feeling different energy levels is changing, and um, there's just some good fruit that's coming from that. Um, I was thinking about that because every once in a while, I, like every other human being on the planet right now, I would venture to say, um, want to reach over and grab an Oreo or grab some uncooked cookie dough or, or grab something just to uh, stuff in, in my body. And um, the results that happen when I do those kinds of things are very different than the results that happen when I kind of stick to the game plan that I have. Um, I'm very thankful. I still get to enjoy some things that I really love. Um, it's just really uh, training in a in a new way. Um, but I started thinking about the fuel that we put into our bodies and um, the things that sometimes come out of our bodies. Um, so I wanted to read this particular passage for you. Um, and maybe it's a little bit of a stretch, but hopefully you'll see my connection here in just a moment. Uh, this is James, a letter that James wrote to the church. Um, chapter 3, beginning in verse 9, it says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Um, I listen to these words and, and I think about my uh, eating habits when I want to eat my feelings or when I um, just want to indulge for the sake of indulgence because it's something that I love so much that I just want to keep going back for more until I'm absolutely miserable. Um, and I think of it in terms of um, when I overdo or when I don't make great choices, uh, what goes in has a, a result that is produced on the outside. Uh, typically that result is a whole lot more weight uh, to be carrying around. Um, I think about the same thing when I hear the words that James wrote to the church in, in spiritual terms. I think about um, how we can be sometimes two entirely different people. Um, I've used the example in the past that um, we can be in church, we can worship together, we can be raising our hands, we can be on our knees, we can be communing together, and then we can um, just put on all kinds of redneck sass, if you will, uh, when we're leaving the parking lot in a hurry to get to wherever our next stop is and whatever our next task is for that day. Um, and it's really odd to see people that were embracing and loving and, and caring for one another. Um, now, I know that probably doesn't happen at our church or your church if you're going to a church um, that is not Parkway currently. But I've seen this in churches over 20 years, um, how we don't always project what is um, supposed to be our root and our core. Um, the text says that you cannot produce fresh water from salt water. Well, how did the salt water get there? 
Uh, you cannot produce figs from grapevines, and you cannot produce olives from fig trees, and all of these kinds of examples. Um, it's saying something about what's in our DNA, how we're hardwired, where our power and our fuel source comes from. Um, it's a reminder to me that we need to take a look at what we're putting into our beings. It's not about food, if that's where you thought I was going with this. Uh, it's really about our spiritual diet. Um, how are we feeding ourselves? We're continuing to feed ourselves with um, just the news or feed ourselves with just um, outside sources. If we continue to feed ourselves through um, public opinion and, and the sway of populace at any given moment, um, we may not be acting out of the fresh water that Christ is nurturing within us. Um, it's in those places where we are acting in our own steam, where we are acting out of our own self-centeredness that um, we oftentimes have that salt water come out of our mouth or have those actions not mirror the image of God that we are made in. And so for me today, this is just a gentle reminder from James's letter that um, I can got to be careful because in my humanity, I can be two things at once. I can be leaning into my relationship with Christ and can be loving and honorable and compassionate and all of those things. And I can be the complete opposite of that if I let things go awry and I decide to um, act in a different, out of a different source, um, namely selfishness or my self-centeredness. Um, I think James's intent is um, not to beat us up too badly, but just for us to have a moment to have some time to reflect on the ways that we act and the choices that we make. Um, what is the fuel source? What are we putting into our bodies? If we're putting in resentment and we're putting in frustration and we're putting in fear and we're putting in all of these things that would drive us to um, be completely different than the image of Christ that we're made in, um, I think that's what James is trying to highlight for us. Um, what would happen if we put a little more of the scriptures into our knowledge and into our hearts? What would happen if we devoted ourselves a little more regularly to prayer? Wouldn't the well that is being developed within us become deeper and richer and be more nurturing for a sustainable faith over the long haul? I think that it would be. So. I would just ask you today as you're reflecting on this, and again, if you want to go back and read it for yourselves in your own text and take a look at the context of James talking about taming the tongue, um, the chapter is chapter 3, and we began in verse 9. Um, the whole passage is, is really great. Um, it's in our words, I think, I hear us go astray most frequently. Um, that's the quickest place, the easiest place for things to go awry. So what would happen if what was feeding those words was more rooted in Christ? How can you, in your walk, in your faith journey, wherever you're at now, be a part of that transition to move into Jesus, to, to be speaking forth from the well that never leaves you thirsty, um, the one that does not make you parched, but the one that uh, fulfills and satisfies and satiates the soul? Um, that's the place that I want to be, and I pray that that's the place that you want to be as well. Um, keep checking back with us every day at noon. We have devotions Monday through Friday. Um, don't forget on Saturday at noon we have a prayer time. Uh, we'll go back and do some celebrations and some prayer requests this Saturday. I'll be meeting with you again at that time. And then also check out our worship service. Um, we'll be online uh, premiering a new video with a new series um, this Sunday at 10.30. Thanks so much. We hope that you all have a blessed day.